Today we're going to talk about how to stop GPU sag once and for all, end of story, for free, no more you know having this awesome build and then you look and it just looks like your graphics card needs Viagra. We're going to go ahead and show you guys how to fix it, period. Bring your entire setup together with IQ from Corsair. Customize lighting effects by choosing from a vast selection of presets, or create your own using custom lighting features allowing you to synchronize your battle station to your own taste and style. IQ also allows for full system monitoring and control including fan speeds, lighting and more, all from a single interface. To see all that IQ from Corsair has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So I gotta show you guys first and foremost what is actually happening here with SAG. We're gonna be using our Gundam build that we did. So as I was saying, it's kind of twofold as to the problem here. One, the graphics cards have gotten bigger and heavier throughout the years because their wattage uh, and heat has gone up. But the card manufacturers own the real issue here. And I'm gonna demonstrate this by showing you some older version cards and some newer version cards. Now, first and foremost, the coolers in just about every single instance, well, just about, not all of them, but just about every instance is much bigger than the card. So if we take a look at our Strix 3080 here, you can see the PCB only goes as far as where these screws are right here. Now it's taller, of course, as you can see, the PCB does come all the way out to the edge, which is a good, I don't know, 30 millimeters or so taller than the standard height of a graphics card. Now you're only mounting your graphics card into your case with two, two points of triangulation. The brackets that attach to the back and then the motherboard slot itself. Now the motherboard slot isn't doing anything other than keeping it from falling this way. But because the point of contact is all the way on one extreme and the other point of contact is all the way here, you've got this well, this non-triangulated place where things are being mounted, which means all of the weight that is being supported here is being cantilevered by all the weight out here. Now, when you start to have all this extra weight in these triple slot cards with these big old heat sinks and stuff on them weighing four or five pounds in many instances, the cards naturally want to sag because since we're supported here, weight is pulling it down here and that's what happens. It starts to pull away from the points at which it's mounting. Now the Strix card is actually, of all the ones on the table here for 30 series, is probably the least offender when it comes to sag. And the reason for that quite simply is the fact that if you take a look at the double bracket here, it's supported right here. So you can see how I can't push it in like the cooler itself, although if you look closely right here, you can see it just sort of wraps, the, the, the bracket just sort of wraps over the cooler. It's not actually screwed down in any way, but if you look at it in the mounted perspective, what that means is if the, if the card is sagging downward here, that means it's pushing in and up over there. Well, that's pushing against the bracket. So this is why this card itself doesn't sag too bad. I mean, I obviously undid the anti-sag support that's built into this case. And it's sad that case manufacturers have had to start doing something like this because card manufacturers are just breaking a cardinal rule of support. Let's take a look at the Tough series. This is the 3080 Tough. And although it is more hollow in there, take a look at that. You can see all the way through it. It's pretty hollow in there. They do at least make contact here. You can see where the cooler and the bracket touch each other. It's the same deal where it's not screwed down and connected but it is at least giving it a point of contact to touch, right? When you're, when you're climbing a ladder or you're climbing a radio tower or whatever, what is OSHA safety? It's about three points of contact, right? Two feet, one hand, two hands, one foot. You always have to have at least three points of contact. Your face on something doesn't count. But although this is not screwed down, you can see that if I push it, it still has a lot of flex. Do you see that? You see how much flex is moving there? That flex is exactly what's flexing when the card sags. You have all this weight pushing down, and if there's nothing to support it going this way, the card goes that way. Now I'm exaggerating it, obviously. The tough is, is well, it looks the part, but it's, it still has sag. In fact, let me show you real quick. So it's screwed down now, only one screw, but still, look at this. All that flex, if you look down inside there, Phil, if you look down right here, do you see that? There's nothing to support the card. It's just wobbling all around because there's nothing for it to touch. <laughs> Shake it more than twice you're playing with it. Oh, I'm playing with it right now, look at this. That is 100% 
ASUS's fault because they did not support the card in any way in a spot where all of that force is gonna be diverted. Let's take a look at the MSI card here. They at least added this bracket. This is an L-shaped bracket that mounts to the, to the little IO shield here. I don't know if you call it IO shield, whatever, the little, the tab. And it still mounts to the card. Look at this, it comes all the way across right here. So that is designed to give it some level of support. The issue with this card is the fact that it does it at the top of the bracket. And although it does, if you look in there, you can see how it comes down and screws in right there. So it goes in and then down. I feel like if they brought this bracket all the way across and mounted it on the bottom, you would have less flex. Cause there's a point of flex there. Cause if you look in there, that one's completely hollow. There is nothing in there, whatever. So although stronger than the tough, it's still going to have some flex. Not as bad though, look at that. I didn't even screw it down yet. And it's already doing better than the tough card. It's still completely horizontal. It's not even touching the anti-sag thing. And we haven't even, so all I would do is I would push as much force as I can that way to put as much tightness on that top screw as I can to keep it for, for when it finally has weight applied, it sags to level. That's usually what I aim for. But there are some cards in the, in the market. I love you EVGA. You have the worst bracket of them all. This one here is not triangulated in any way. Look at this. The EVGA card is one of the most sagging cards. I could, I could literally right now if I wanted just just bend that out of the way. And although it does make contact with the cooler, I'll flip this around, Phil. If you look down in there, when it finally makes contact, look how non 90 degree that, that angle is. So if you take, and if you look, there's no screws here. There's nothing for it to attach to the cooler whatsoever. It's just a big flexi bracket with the biggest, one of the biggest heaviest coolers on the market. So if we go ahead and put this one in here, that's pretty bad. So I'll even put the top screw in here. Actually, I don't even need to put the top screw because look, if you look at the bracket here, look at the top screw. There's no top screw in there. The bracket is not moving. That's just flex, flexi, flexi, flex. So if you look, it's, it's actually pointing down already. And you can see by just how much bob, like bobbing and bobbling around in there there is, that, uh, that bracket itself is not su supplying any sort of support. Now, the reason why I'm saying this falls on the manufacturers is they knew this. Here's the EVGA 2080 Ti. What do you see right here? Screw, screw, screw. Mounting to the cooler. I've taken this card apart a million times. This is some of the cards we've done XOC with. It's a triple slot, by the way, not a two slot when it comes to the bracket. So you have a wider point of contact there for it to support the weight. It's mounted, no flex, because they knew that. They supported the weight. So if we go ahead and throw this card in there, look at that, I didn't even screw it down. It's already more level than the 3080. And I know, guys, I'll get, to the, I'll get to the free fix in a sec. I have to demonstrate the problem as to, to understand where the fix is. The 2080 Ti from MSI, this one is more of an offender than the 30 series because it, it does still have, it, so it has the same bracket design. You can see there's a, the black support bracket right there. There's nothing actually screwing to the card down here. It can flex and touch the cooler. Watch right here, there's a gap right there. You can see the gap under the, between the cooler and the plate, you can see it can flex and touch it. And that gives it a little bit of support. Now, forgive me if anyone else has talked about this. I've not looked up any videos. I think Kyle might've actually done an anti-sag video recently. If anyone else has talked about this particular method, it's completely coincidental. I've not looked up anything that anyone else has said. This is just something we actually found and figured out when we were doing the build with my six-year-old daughter. Let's take the worst offender card here, which is the 3090. Same exact cooler that's on my daughter's 3080, uh, 3080 non-TI that we just put in her build. Same exact cooler, same weight, same dimensions, and it's the way we fixed it. Because this is a two slot card, we know we need two opening slot, two open slots right here, for this right here. Because we also know we need the cooler and the IO shield to be, or the, the back cover, whatever you call these, I don't know what you even call these, PCI adapter slots, look at that, that's just so sad seeing that level of, that just makes me sad. Anyway, um, it's such a good card. We know we need that supported and triangulated. So what you can do, these 
or just extra IO shield adapters or covers, whatever for the back, PCIe slot covers. I just took the tabs off of these, right? And, and this is pretty, and they're all a little bit different size and shapes. So you're gonna, you probably have the ones you took out from your graphics card, hopefully you still have them, that you can use for this. That's why I say it's free. So I'm just gonna do the old wobbly back and forth trick to break this off. So just bend it back and forth, break it off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build up a stack of them on the lowest spot under the card. So it's because this is a triple slot and it's gonna be mounting right there. I wanna build up a shim right here underneath the lower slot if it's, if it's available like that. In fact, all of these cards, look at this. Look, all of these. They're all three slot cards with two slot brackets. EVJ knew what was going on back here. It frustrates me. Anyway, I digress. Take the screw off. You don't need to come up with any of the stupid support brackets that brands have come out with to try and support their heavy card. You know, this would actually be a cheaper fix than supplying the stupid bracket that half the times look ugly as hell and doesn't fit right anyway. Let's just start building up a shim. Just start stacking them like that. As long as you can get that hole to still line up. Can I get three of them on there? Which would mean we have a total of four. I doubt it. No, we can't. So we'll go with two because that's actually what it took for my daughter's my daughter's card. And some of these are gonna be different thicknesses. Like see how this one's kind of got this sort of a channel right here that sticks up. On the other side, it would be recessed. So that would add thickness obviously as well. See that right there, how it sticks out. It's not as flat as these guys. So the nice thing about these is you can shim it up more. The only downside is the, the more you shim it, the more offset the hole gets. And then you have a problem trying to get your screw hole lined up. So I'm just gonna do two. Let's see how that does. And I might be thinking, dude, this is gonna be ugly. Well, what's uglier? This that you'll barely see or your card looking like a, an ad for Pfizer's Viagra. So here we go. Same card, the 3090. I haven't done anything except add those. Look at that. Look at that sag, it's gone. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. I, I've, I, I've tried to come up with other shim ideas in the past because I knew that that's where the card sag was happening. But I've tried to like shim it in the back because you can see how it's sort of, here, I'll show you a second when I get this screw in. You can see back here when I wiggle the card, you can see you sort of get a little bit of in and out back there. So I always tried shimming it there to like pull it down, to pull this up, you know, opposite cantilever action. So you pull down there, it's gonna go up there. But I need to do that. Even if we add the weight of our cables, which look like they're turning pink here, and I don't understand that, but whatever, I digress. And of course, EVJ's tabs are opposite of everyone else's, so I gotta flip them around. I, 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 these are the little things that just make me wonder, like how did this, like who, who went into the CAD? Who removed the third tab? Like why? It was there, EVJ, it was, it was on the 20 series. Why'd you take it away? You knew it was there for a reason. It's ugly, but look, even with the weight of that, that's still sitting perfectly level. So if I wanted now, I could even loosen these up, do the thing where, hold it up, make it tight, and let it sag to level, boom. So now if you look at that, that's, that's acceptable. And that will work with any card on the market because any card that needs the support there, build it up so that it touches the cooler and pushes it back up. So that way it can't sag that way. Cause you see how the way it's leveraging on my hand right there? There's a, there's a void that has to be filled. And if you can fill that void, so it pushes up and then the weight brings it level and you're good to go. This might seem like one of the stupidest videos I've ever done. Should never have been necessary. But we've looked at so many builds in our React series of cards that are sagging all over the place. I figured a little PSA showing you just a couple of these things can save you from that looking like a limp noodle. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Share this video with someone that's got terrible card sag and be like, here, friends don't let friends card sag. Share them a link to this video. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.